from where these criminals, these gangsters come from, how they get these arms, these handguns, these uh, guns. And do you think, because we believe as a media, when we go to the public, that this is the reason of the unchecked immigration which is going on in the country. Being a chief, what do you think, what is the reason from where they get uh, these illegal guns and from where these new gangsters, because they are not the domestic gangsters, from where they come from? Right, so uh, right now our investigative efforts, we've made a, an arrest recently of one individual involved with one of the violent acts in the extortion. So uh, as of yesterday, we have had 20 uh, cases of reported extortion here in Peel that we're investigating. About five or six of them have involved uh, uh, violence where there's been a shooting at a business. We have not identified all of those six who was involved with those mm -hmm. shootings. Some may be the same. Uh, one arrest. Uh, we have not been able to say uh, for sure it's because of any particular reason that is, uh, you know, based on immigration, et cetera. What, but we do know is that it's uh, focused on South Asian communities, South Asian businesses. Some of the tactics being employed are being done overseas. And we know that some of the means for threatening uh, the victims here in Peel have been done uh, by internet. WhatsApp phone calls, internet bases, uh, the, the cash being asked for is either in Canadian dollars or Indian rupees. We know that. So it obviously shows, you know, uh, 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 pressures that aren't just within our local communities. Now, uh, the firearms position, we know that 95 to 96 percent of the firearm handguns we seize yeah. here in Ontario are illegally obtained from the US. Mm -hmm. So we can't attribute that to, you know, foreign immigration policies. Mm -hmm. The reality is that we have the longest undefended border in the world. And while we here in Canada, we are uh, restricting and prohibiting the sale of uh, restricted prohibited firearms like handguns, we have some US states that are allowing uh, people to purchase it without a permit. Mm -hmm. So we have one country that is, you know, has uh, an amendment that allows the right to bear firearms and extremely hard, large number and ease of buying firearms right beside Canada. For it to come, we know it comes in shipping containers, mail postage, in vehicles. Mm -hmm. You can walk across a yes. bridge. You can, we know they're using drones to bring it into and you can ship it. It is really one of the biggest challenges is to prevent illegal firearms from coming from the U.S. into here. The ease now for a criminal to obtain it, uh, and you ask any of our officers, we are now seizing an illegal firearm every 48 hours here in Peel, Peel region. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the prevalence, the ease of access, it, it doesn't really matter what type of cr cr criminal you are you can easily obtain it here in Canada. And that is one of our biggest challenges. So now, yeah. when somebody wants to threaten a businessman to obtain, they can uh, uh, really legitimately uh, add the element of violence with so much ease. And so we have to do two things. We have to investigate, determine who's responsible for the coordinated extortion of businesses. But at the same time, on the street, we need to find the individuals accessing the firearms, charge them, and make sure our co courts prosecute them properly. The Montreal Police recently, uh, there is a video viral going on from the Montreal Police, and I'll read the statement that releasing door cam video of people stealing your stuff from your doorsteps, uh, that could be a violation of thief's right uh, if we publish that video on the social media of our own video. So public community is asking that can we publish our own videos from our property to the social media? Because th that was the statement by the Montreal Police. What is the actual fact? Can yeah, we ab absolutely, you can if you're the homeowner. Okay. It's your own public. So the, the ability for somebody to approach your property and mm -hmm. walk onto your doorstep, they've entered your property. Yeah. Their expectation of privacy is no longer one which is guaranteed. Okay. If, obviously, if it's in a private setting, mm -hmm. or uh, then it, they're different consideration so we would never encourage that in fact we want your doorstep cameras we utilize it uh, for, the to, for identification uh, you know many investigations it's been critical for us uh, if a private citizen wants to utilize it in social media uh, to gain listen I think we always 
would like to receive that as the police because okay. it helps us strengthen our investigations. Uh, if you have video, send it to us first. We would like to use it. It helps us analyze and identify people. Okay. Uh, Chief, uh, auto theft is a national crisis and for the last couple of years we are discussing that time to time and uh, police, all the region police are doing their best with the resources they have. Now recently there was a case from the Brampton driveway uh, loaded AK-47. The car was stolen with the loaded AK-47. Now two questions. AK-47, the, these uh, thieves already have and cars are stolen. So when member of parliaments or MPPs when they meet you, did you give them suggestions that this is happening and police is catching the criminals, containers, but it has to be more and more to be done at the federal level? Borders, we have borders as you that's a big challenge. Drugs and ammunition is coming in and cars are going out. There is a recent CBC report also that car was found in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Previous it was found in Ghana and Ghana country said Canada need to be proactive, catch your stolen cars there. So what advice you give to the our federal MPs, MPPs or uh, the politicians that these actions need to be taken at earliest as possible? Thank you, so you've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. Yeah. The problem is this has always been treated as a stolen property. Yeah. But it's not just a stolen property. It is uh, literally a means to commit other crimes. It could be acts of violence, drug trafficking, uh, extortion. But what we're seeing now are the vehicles are used as a commodity as a source to fund organized crime internationally. So uh, this last several months, we have met with federal ministers, uh, federal justice ministers, public safety, uh, as well as uh, the federal attorney general to provide recommendations at the federal level that include strengthening uh, uh, our ports uh, to have dedicated resources to examine exportation. Uh, secondly, to look at potentially legislative reforms, some to the criminal code, but some also to shipping cus customs and excise, which we know are big things to change, but uh, small adjustments can allow us to do better investigations. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we uh, wanted to do is strengthen our international ability. You're absolutely right. Uh, other countries like uh, that look at uh, Canada believe that we're not doing anything here to prevent the export. Yeah. So not only do local police need to do things, but we need federal uh, support, uh, one of which uh, I know the federal government is very uh, open to discussing it. Uh, we, just like the bail reform from yes. last year, we need to see uh, what the government is willing to do. Some of it is resourcing within the federal level, but some is to help some uh, transformative changes.